I've got a thrilling story for you today. Many of you have heard about the Iditarod, which is this epic race across Alaska in the month of March with a musher and a team of dogs, sometimes Alaskan Mamelukes, sometimes Siberian Huskies. It's a grueling race, 40 below zero to 100 below zero wind chill through these terrible snowstorms and traveling about a thousand miles from Anchorage, Alaska, which is on the south shore of Alaska, and then all the way up to Nome, which is on the western shore on the Bering Sea. It's a grueling trip. It's commemorating a race against time that was really a mercy mission. In 1925, January of 1925, a diphtheria epidemic broke out in the city of Nome, especially among the children. And the nearest serum to help them was in Anchorage. And so they put this cylinder of the serum on a train and they took it north up to a town called Ninana. And from there, the boats, of course, couldn't get through because of the ice. I think they only had two planes in those days, and they were both winterized sitting in storage for the winter. And so uh, the trains didn't run over there. They had to take it by dog sled. There were 18 teams that volunteered to take this journey. And I think in 127 hours, if you can believe this, 675 miles nonstop through day and night, through blizzards, one of them actually cut across the ice on a bay to speed up the trip. In about a little over five days, they were able to get this life-saving serum to Nome. And so in 1973, I think, they began this race, and the whole purpose of the race was, of course, there was sport involved and uh, fame for the winners and money involved and uh, sponsors or all sorts of things at work. But really, the main purpose was to commemorate this mercy race across Alaska in the winter. And so it's now about a thousand miles, officially a thousand and forty nine, because Alaska is the 49th state. But as I read about this race and thought about these men willing to risk their lives, now, of course, I think three or four years the Iditarod has been won by women and their and their teams. But in those days, in 1925, it was all men with these dogs, heroic dogs, in some cases going through blinding snow. All they could depend on were the lead dogs. In fact, one of those dogs uh, named Balto was commemorated. His was in, I think, the last leg of the race that crossed to Nome and brought the serum. There's a statue of him in Central Park in New York. He became sort of a worldwide hero commemorating this amazing journey. As I thought about this and realized that the Lord Jesus gathered his disciples just before he went back to heaven, and Mark tells us that he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they didn't believe the witnesses concerning his resurrection. But then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He also explained that the clock was ticking. This was a time issue. It was a rescue operation. There was something worse than diphtheria at the end of their journey. There were people who were lost in sin and in danger of hellfire. And so almost immediately, people began to move out from Jerusalem and made their way across the world. And to this day, people are going into the most difficult situations fighting their way through jungles, facing malaria and other deadly diseases. The opposition 
of the enemy of men's souls and witch doctors and religious systems that hate the gospel. They face cultural challenges and, in many countries, indifference to the gospel. But they keep pursuing this goal, fighting their way, yes, up north of the Arctic Circle. Yes, into the most remote areas, in danger of uh, headhunters and cannibals. And they carry on in the work of God. And uh, through it all, not like these Iditarod winners who win a little temporary fame and fortune, but for the cause of Christ are willing to sacrifice themselves. Their families go through hardship. They leave behind their loved ones. And we just thank God for the intrepid spirits who down through the centuries have carried on this work like tag teams, taking on, passing on the baton from generation to generation and to this day around the world. And not only through personal contact, but through the internet, through printing work, through radio and television, they have spread the gospel around the world. Now, you would think that two great disqualifiers for taking out the gospel would be unbelief and hardness of heart. And yet the Lord, having rebuked them for that, he then turns around and tells these very same men to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And it reminds us that God is not looking for people who are finished, polished, uh, perfect. He's looking for people who are willing and they may have their foibles and their struggles. Many of them have had. They go out sometimes with great trepidation and fear and maybe a lack of faith sometimes. But then the Lord moves in their hearts. How thankful we are for those who cross the finish line well and who accomplish the work of God. There's still very much land to be possessed but we thank God that every generation thrusts out a new generation. And the Bible tells us to pray for the Lord of the harvest, to thrust out labors into his harvest field. There's still so much left to be done. And yet, thank God for all of these intrepid souls in a race against time, because the clock is ticking, and we never know when the Lord's going to return to receive us to himself. But in the meantime, faint yet pursuing sometimes, in the work. We thank God for all of his servants in lonely outposts, in struggles, in physical pain and suffering, with poor transportation and uh, education issues for their children, and the opposition, uh, very often even of the religious people and of others who profess to be Christians. They carry on in the work of God. Three cheers for them, and we look forward to the finish line when we'll see what God has accomplished through his people in a race far greater than the Iditarod.